what is its uh, importance and significance why we are going to uh, fundamentals uh, because we uh, due to lack of study period and uh, immense gap in uh, that continuation of concepts building so uh, we will just recall our fundamental concepts and then we will move up to advanced topics of uh, mechanics of solids too so uh, in this uh, period we will be following mechanics of materials book uh, written by paul s steef and uh, it's very interesting book it was very harder to find and a uh, very significant book you, he has revolutionized the teaching of uh, mechanics of materials by providing hundreds of illustrations uh, which are required for uh, physically expressing or teaching students that uh, what the instructor is conveying so you can see that uh, even uh, in its headline uh, heading or title of the book this is material and he has applied tension and this is e bending and you can see twisting and where is the compression i think this i can be called as a compressive member uh, and it is a load so mechanics of materials and this book was written in 2012 so this is almost a recent book and you can relate your courses or your curriculum uh, to the standards which are followed in uh, america in current era so this book was written by a professor uh, of mechanical engineering Uh, he is uh, working as a professor at Carnegie Mellon University so uh, how he has written this book and uh, visual content is available you can see that uh, this is a member and on which tensile forces are applied so if you are just uh, studying the inner uh, behavior of this member you can take a section and uh, you can you have studied that when whole body is in equilibrium its sub components are also in equilibrium so this is one sub component and this is another sub component and uh, you can see that force is applied and uh, this will be resisted by the uh, inner section of the body so this is force equilibrium and uh, this is force versus deformation equilibrium forces are applied and stresses are resisting over some area and you can uh, you have studied the relation between force and stress stress is equal to force per unit area so uh, in chapter 1 design of products systems and structures demands uh, the engineers to consider a broad range of issues so real time issues how they are being addressed by uh, mechanics of materials and the issue addressed by mechanics of materials are excessive deformation and material failure so these are the basic uh, fundamentals of which we are studying in mechanics of materials that uh, how your uh, physical bodies behave or react to the out uh, outer forces uh, a few uh, general principles enable us to design against excessive deformation and failure so your all members have to be designed against uh, these deformations or failures so uh, you have to consider a wide range of geometry material and loading conditions so uh, loading conditions are external and uh, geometries and uh, materials are in your control regarding design so we consider uh, the body to be composed of elements we study common uh, deformation modes and we combine contribution of each deformation mode as needed to assess deformation and failure how we are going to deal with this we uh, there is a body we assume there is a body and which is resisting some forces and we want to study that body under uh, different forces so uh, that element or that body 
is our uh, circle of uh, study and we study uh, we are interested in deformation modes how this body will react to those uh, subjected forces and uh, under different combination of these deformations and uh, their failures so this is body composed of different elements chapter number 1 and uh, chapter number 2 you will study axial forces and chapter number 4 will be related to torsion and chapter number 5 will be related to bending stresses and 6 will be excessive deformation and uh, you can see that uh, uniaxial deformation then biaxial deformation and uh, then this is uh, triaxial deformation and uh, you will be also studying material failure and buck buckling so this is our major uh, concern in uh, mechanics of solids too that uh, how material will fail and how materials will buckle and these are our concepts of mechanics of solids one all right so this is the content of this book you can see uh, why study mechanics of material how uh, mechanics of materials predict uh, deformation and failure review of static uh, forces and subsystems and free body diagrams review of static uh, forces interaction simply so this is a review chapter number 1 so chapter number 2 will be related to internal forces stresses and strains so why i am recalling these things that you should relate your uh, what you have studied in mechanics of solids 1 or mechanics of solids 2 in uh, up till 10 lectures and uh, how you know, this your uh, curriculum is related to um, highly developed countries uh, like america and uh, you are just studying the latest and recent topics and uh, following the international standards so uh, chapter number 2 will be related to internal forces and stresses and strains you have studied them elements internal forces normal stresses normal strains measuring stress and strain elastic behavior of material failure and allowable limit on stress variety of stress strain response you have studied this in detail and shear strain and shear stresses shear and bearing stresses in pin joints so axial loading internal force deformation displacement force deformation displacement varying internal forces system of axially loaded members statically indeterminate structures you have studied it thermal effects uh, warp cables and uh, rings and bands so torsion you have studied this uh, rotation shear strain in circular shafts application and transmission of torque shear stress in circular shafts strength and stiffness what is the difference between strength and stiffness and dependence of stiffness and strength on shaft properties general guidelines for torsional stiffness of non circular cross sections mm. circular shafts with rectangular cross sections circular shafts with thin walled cross sections circular shafts with non uniform twisting along their lengths internal torque and relation to twist and stresses relation between senses and signs of internal torques twist and stresses okay uh, different signs which are depicted and shafts with varying cross sections uh, combined shafts and statically indeterminate structures subjected to torsions and uh, power torque speed relationship for ro rotating shafts so this is a detailed chapter on torsion which you have studied in mechanics of solids 1 bending so this was you studied in mechanics of solids 2 shear stresses and bending moments deformation in bending beam loads and supports internal loads in beams uh, internal loads by isolating segments variation of internal loads with applied loads stresses due to bending moments uh, strain distribution in bending ben, uh, stresses in bending bending equation bending of composite cross sections bending stresses under a uniform non uniform bending moments dependence of stiffness and strength uh, on cross section bending of a beam composed of multiple layers and bending of 
general non-symmetric uh, cross section and uh, stresses due to shear forces, transverse shear force, shear flow, thin wall and built up cross sections and uh, deflection due to bending moments. Deflection related to internal loads, uh, deflection using tabulated solutions, simple uh, generalized of tabulation. This bending uh, deflection chapter is uh, mostly we have the, um, you will be studying in uh, structure analysis one. And these are designed against combined loads. Uh, mostly your structures and your elements are subjected uh, to a very complex uh, state of loads and uh, under com uh, combined loads, how they will be designed. So you will be studying in unit three, chapter number six and uh, determining internal loads, drawing stress on 3D elements, pressure vessels. Pressure vessels contains um, thick wall cylinders and thin wall cylinders. Elastic stress strain relationship, deflection, strain energy and uh, yeah. So this chapter number 7 is our major concern after uh, reviewing all the concepts, uh, fundamental concepts in our uh, three lectures we will uh, just directly move to this chapter number seven and we will study this in detail it's chapter number seven and chapter number eight of this book and that will uh, wind up this course and uh, stress transformation and failure and uh, defining stress and uh, maximum Mohr circle failure criteria so buckling and this is appendices and uh, answers are also provided and key terms and index so this is the preface uh, to the students that um, you should go through it and why this book was written what was the purpose and how students should be uh, studying this chapter wise or uh, connected units should be studied or uh, maybe independent units should be studied so all these things are discussed in this thing and to the instructor that how he is going to or he or she is going to evaluate the students so resources for the instruction the solution manual is also available presentation resources are also available okay acknowledgements different a book is written after a immense efforts of years and uh, then that is combined together and uh, different uh, reviews are um, taken from the both students and uh, different instructors of different renowned universities so you can see that uh, special thanks to these reviews they have contributed to this uh, Washington State and George Washington and Pennsylvania State University and uh, University of Oklahoma so very famous universities uh, professors have contributed and reviewed this book and this is about the author he's a mechanical engineer and uh, in 1983 he did bachelors and PhD from Harvard University very interesting guy and a very interesting book he has written amazing okay this is related to their software they have developed regarding this subject okay that's interesting so this is regarding grading of the subject okay This is our mechanics of materials. All right, uh, introduction to mechanics of materials. In mechanics of materials, we study um, bodies under deformation, and def we study and we consider that bodies are deformable and they are subjected to different forces, and uh, there is a deformation occurring uh, within the elements of the body. So, what is the difference between uh, mechanics of uh, solids and mechanics uh, engineering mechanics? The fundamental difference lies in the basic assumption of the material or element. What is that assumption? That materials are rigid. That is the basic fundamental assumption of engineering ma materials, uh, engineering mechanics subjects in which all your calculations regarding uh, forces and resultant uh, vectors 
are totally dependent on one assumption that body is in equilibrium and secondly uh, body is rigid and that can translate or that can rotate and uh, there are no stresses almost at all and uh, there might be stresses but there is no deformation at all while in mechanics of materials we consider that bodies are deformable and they can deform uh, when subjected against uh, different loading conditions okay that is the basic difference between engineering materials and mechanics of materials or strength of materials or uh, um, mechanics of materials different variety of uh, titles have been um, named against this subject so uh, which type of deformations we are considering and which type of forces we are considering uh, just we you have gone through them that uh, there can be uh, axial loads there can be biaxial loads and there can be triaxial loads and combined loads too so uh, when your there is an element simple example of loading is axial load that can be direct loading axial loads can be uh, like this that uh, there is a strut and uh, compressive forces are applied and there is a tie and uh, uh, tensile forces are applied so if there is a strut axial compressive forces are applied and uh, compression is seen and if there is a tie and uh, axial tens tensile forces are applied and extension can be seen so deformation can be seen or not that depends on your material on your geometry and the loading conditions these three major factors which are in, uh, depending on which this deformation of uh, your element or body depends loading condition materials on uh, from which that material is uh, that element is made and third is uh, first I, uh, loading materials and geometry so these are three fundamentals uh, against which we analyze them and uh, we design them first we analyze the structures and then we design the structures against those loadings all right over this author wants to say uh, let's overview them introduction to mechanics of material it says that uh, you can see that this is a rack uh, on which books are piled and is placed uh, in a chronological order and uh, you can see that this is a metallic support and uh, a beam is provided uh, beneath these books I suggest to do something about this sagging shelf so shelf is provided and uh, this is sagging can be seen you do can just draw a straight line and you can see the deflection and this is the sagging and if this deflection is out at upward side then that is called hogging H O double G I N G hogging I need to uh, do something uh, so author wants to um, ask you that uh, he wants to do something regarding this deflection this sagging excessive def uh, deformation okay this is excessive unbearable this will and this is uh, creating a threat that this will uh, fail ultimately so excellent mechanics of material can help with that another guy responded that okay you should just go and study mechanics of material and uh, this problem will be resolved and uh, if I knew the factors that affect the sagging I could uh, redesign the self so it sags less so this is very critical study mechanics of material. second guy says that uh, to solve your problem I need to study mechanics of material and uh, in mechanics of material I need to know those factors which are affecting this sagging and I would uh, design this uh, shelf in a better way so how is uh, going to analyze it how do I model this shelf this guy second guy is uh, thinking that how sh uh, should I model this the shelf is bending under the weight of those books the self is external load and it's resting on the brackets at the ends so these are the brackets on which it is resting in the mechanics of material I can represent this shelf approximately as a beam with simple supports so this is a beam provided and simple supports are provided I can uh, approximate the books as applying a uniformly distributed force on the beam 
So these are the uniformly distributed forces. So uh, you can see that uh, this this is the mass uh, which will be in kg. You have to convert that into force. Force is equal to mg mass into uh, gravity. Force due to gravity. So uh, for mass multiplied by g mg. So mass into gravity that will be converted into q that is force and uh, you can see that uh, this is uh, placed on this brackets this beam is placed on these brackets and uh, these brackets can be modeled as simply supported beam or maybe you can uh, model it uh, in a better way uh, regarding roller supports both are roller supports because these can move uh, laterally horizontally but not laterally All right, very good example. So this uh, he has uh, modeled it. This is the free body diagram of your beam. You have eliminated all those uh, external supports and shown as a free body diagram. Okay, forces are not shown, so free body diagram of the uh, beam will be shown uh, with the forces. So you cannot say that this is overall free body diagram just assume it for a, a meanwhile what key results do i need to uh, need from analyzing the model so deflection the maximum deflection v at the center of the shelf is given by this equation so how we are going to uh, calculate the deflection so that is given by this formula deflection is equal to 5 ql4 uh, divided by uh, 384 ei this is deflection formula for simply supported beam. If your case is different, if that is fixed beam, then that uh, formula will change and uh, continuous beam, this formula will change and this is the uh, formula for analysis, analysis of the deflection. So uh, what is this Q? Force per length applied by the book. This is uh, one force and uh, force applied per unit length. This is force, how much it will be. If this is uh, one kg book into uh, G and that will convert it to force and that force is uh, uniformly applied. So force per unit area. So this is Q. L is the length of the shelf between the brackets. So this sub, this length is not included from this bracket pin to this another pin this length is the l and 384 is the constant and e is the modulus of elasticity of the shelf so it tells uh, us how stiff the material itself the wood affects the bending so this is e modulus of elasticity you cannot calculate e you have to test e this is important this is the material property materials are tested against its properties i is the geometric property i is second moment of inertia it tells me how the width and the thickness affects the bending so these are important so this is the force which i told you that uh, first uh, element you should consider first important factor which you should consider is force then uh, L is geometric property, I is geometric property and E is material property. So for calculation of a behavior of uh, just uh, calculating the behavior or understanding the behavior of this uh, sagging or reason for this sagging, these three uh, variables are included in your equation with uh, the help of some constants. So a relationship has been formulated and uh, deflection is directly proportional to the force applied. The greater the force is, the greater the deflection. The greater the length, the greater the deflection. The greater the modulus of elasticity, the lesser the deflection. The greater the uh, moment of inertia, the lesser the deflection. So uh, how uh, elastic modulus is important? You can see this is a wood. If this is uh, made of concrete, then modulus of elasticity of concrete is higher than modulus of elasticity of wood. G 
generally because there are different types of holes too and uh, there are different types of concrete too so this is generic statement that uh, modulus of elasticity of uh, wood is lesser uh, lesser than modulus of elasticity of concrete all right so uh, for greater modulus of elasticity you should just uh, make a shelf of concrete okay another option if uh, still there is deflection seen and deflection is too much then uh, you have you can calculate that uh, you can bring in steel this beam made of steel this modulus of elasticity is much higher than concrete too second option what you can do is reduce the length but uh, sometimes reduction of length is not possible so you just change the cross section of the uh, this beam you can see cross section includes uh, width and thickness so this is a rectangle so i formula for rectangle is b h cube divided by 12 so b h cube divided by b h cube divided by 12 so h is important h raised to power 3 b h cube divided by 12 so if you just increase thickness then that will be very good for resisting the uh, deflection so this was regarding deflection and from what i just uh, learned how could i redesign the shelf said that okay this was interesting that uh, what he has done he has reduced the length this one i told you before that you can reduce the length you can reduce the force you can reduce you can increase the modulus of elasticity you can increase uh, moment of inertia whatever the case uh, you have to mm, deal from case to case there is no ultimate formula i could uh, make the sh shelf shorter or maybe install another bracket under the center and uh, might need some more analysis okay this case was analyzed by this formula for deflection and this case is simple this case and uh, i have reduced the length rather than twice the length we have reduced the length so deflection is almost half will be reduced and uh, secondly if you are analyzing this whole beam then you have to carry out analysis separate analysis which will be different from this one this is simply supported beam this is a continuous beam and three reactions one reaction two reaction and three reaction you have considered it, it a hinge but if i were there i would just consider it a roller because it it is a roller it can move all right that's interesting i could use a stiffer material stiffness k stiffness is also uh, related to e steel or aluminium steel is more stiffer than aluminium or carbon reinforced composites or fiber reinforced composites whatever the case might be a little uh, overkill for a book uh, bookshelf in my any uh, in my apartment okay wooden uh, shelves are mostly preferred uh, for this aesthetic and uh, interior decoration piece uh, wise the thickness of the shelf has much more effect on the resistance uh, to bending than does its to width so thickness is more important because uh, it is uh, more important in uh, moment of inertia b h cube divided by 12 greater the height the greater the moment of inertia if the greater the moment of inertia the lower the deflection so the thickness of the much effect in uh, resistance and uh, this one and uh, its practical example is this that uh, when you go to different um, larger span girders you would have seen even bridge girders you would have seen that uh, their um, depth is uh, of the beam is greater while breadth is smaller so when your spans are greater you you have to increase the height or depth of the member this is a golden rule how could i uh, 
put a much thicker reinforcing strip on the front that should help I wonder uh, by how much okay this is another way composite make your material composite by strengthening and there will be a shear flow and uh, stresses and uh, you have to do calculation for them welcome to mechanics of materials so this is a practical example a simple example regarding the sagging of the shelf and uh, the author have very uh, interestingly uh, modeled that and analyzed that and uh, suggested few suggestions that how, how what could i do with this problem so this is what uh, mechanics of material you will be studying very interesting subject and uh, very fascinating so in this chapter we will be studying why study mechanics of material this is very important that you should be knowing that why what you are studying and why you are studying those things if you don't know those uh, fundamentals that why we are studying what why what we are doing and why we are doing the greater the reasons you have that why 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 the more wise you have the more interest you carry how mechanics of materials predict uh, deformation and failure okay when you have studied why and when you are sure that what you are going to study then how is important how you are going to deal with this how mechanics of material predict the deformation and failure for this deformation and failure you have to study two subjects mechanics of materials 1 and mechanics of uh, materials 2 at the end of mechanics of materials 2 you study deformation and failure Okay, what's interesting? Uh, review of statics and fundamental. You have to study uh, engineer mechanics, statics, force, subsystem, and free body diagrams. And review of statics representing force interactions simply. Review of statics, condition of equilibrium, and roadmap of this book. So this will be our today's lecture. Why study mechanics of material? The design of products, systems and structures demands the engineers to uh, consider a broad range of issues. Here we identify the issues addressed by mechanics of material. So which, which issues are addressed by mechanics of material? Uh, here we will be just discussing them. And that will create an interest in your uh, student's interest in the subject matter. Account for deformation and potential failure. So you will be accounting the deformation and failure when designing systems subjected to different forces. So when you are being a designer, you are creator. That's fascinating. Engineers are creators. They provide some solution for complex engineering problems and real time problems. So being a designer, you have to consider deformation and failure. So, uh, forces acting on the designed artifacts can be significant. All bodies deform under applied forces. This is for sure. All bodies deform. Even if that is visually not, uh, uh, that cannot be seen, but that can be felt by the uh, sensors of the strain gauges. So, deformation, visibility of deformation is not important. What is important that deformation is there and uh, all bodies deform no matter how stiff members are there and no deformation is seen but still bodies deform and they can fail if deformation is excessive they will fail and if the forces are significantly large mechanics of materials addresses two prime questions how much the body deforms when subjected to forces second when will force uh, uh, when will forces applied to body be large enough to cause the failure what are the critical loading critical loading this is important deformation and failure depends on the forces and the body's material material size and shape i will include shape within the size because how you are going to de deal with the shape if that is a rectangle that is circle or uh, maybe some other uh, trapezium trapezoid which type of shape that is 
the size by size he meant length maybe depth all right so in most situations try to avoid failure and keep deformations within acceptable limits so this is the rule you have to avoid failure and how you are going to avoid failure by keeping the deformation within acceptable limits keeping the deformation within acceptable limits and who will de define these limits there are bodies there are uh, uh, some committees which are mm, sitting in every country and they are mm, developing codes and in those codes they have developed some limits that your members or those should not cross these limits they set the criteria for failure and being an engineer you by your own self set the limits and decides the limits that if deflection is exceeds this much then i will consider this material as failed okay usually the structure and systems must retain intact uh, even when subjected to forces if we know that uh, the forces under which failure would occur we can design to avoid failure design to avoid failure we design to avoid failure further a system often needs to remain uh, close to its original shape so the more need change in shape so the more near change in shape so the more nearer your body and the more precise your body shape is to that original unloaded member then that is undeformed if we can uh, quantify deformation quantify deformation this is important how you are going to quantify deformation there are different uh, support conditions there are different materials so deformation formulas will change we can design the system to avoid under uh, under undesirably large deformations this computerized welding system functions this is computerized welding system functions properly only if the def uh, deflection uh, of its track is very small so you can see that a uh, computer and uh, it is very precise and uh, um, electrical and mechanical system so if there is a uh, deflection and that deflection is little larger then you can see that this uh, precision will totally uh, devastate almost while a structure uh, may still be intact it could be viewed as having failed if there is a permanent deformation so structure is intact but still that deformation is so excessive that uh, it is of no use at all the tire of this bicycle bicycle that has uh, deformation deformed this much is likely to be useful unlikely to be useful yeah and a crack in the structure such as this support column this one this crack is uh, may be repairable okay there can be fancy repairing or maybe real labor repairing whatever the case a structure that fr fractures completely into two parts okay uh, can we decide that this is a fracture in two parts no just by visual inspections you cannot decide that uh, this crack is uh, separating this member into two parts there are different uh, very deep analysis regarding this uh, forensic uh, analysis that what is the crack width location of the crack loading on the crack, that member and um, the situation and the conditions in which this concreting was carried out so forensic science is involved in this structures uh, failure so but still uh, this is uh, this seems awkward anyhow this is a failure this should not happen whatever the case might be a structure that fra fractures completely into two parts uh, would clearly be unacceptable so that is an unacceptable 
okay deformation is desirable wow this is interesting deformation is desirable in some situations where it depends uh, predictably on depends predictably on the forces predictability is important sometimes deformation is desirable this is interesting but that deformation should be predictable too this is more interesting thing you want to have deformation but deformation should be predictable some products must deform to carry out their function they are designed to have their designed relation between the deformation and the acting forces for example such products include pole walls that flex to temporarily store energy so this flexibility stores energy that pro later propels the water uh, mounting uh, that uh, accommodate motions of helicopter blades and supports springs uh, that allow deflection of the structural members so these mountings and these springs we do allow deformation but these deformations are controlled this might be your girder and uh, at the end they are provided this is helicopter uh, that blades aerodynamic forces are applied on these blades and we allow deflection otherwise without deflection you cannot carry out that fundamental principle of aircraft that is to fly and this might be due to um, earthquake effects base isolation and this is an athlete and pole vault is just climbing that jumping with the help of this pole vault so uh, elastic energy is stored here also elastic energy is stored and that energy is up to us that how we are going to liberate that energy or take another some useful uh, effects this energy will be push him uh, to other side this energy will keep its uh, um, position intact okay occasionally failure is desirable wow this is more interesting first we said that sagging we don't want sagging then he said that sometimes we do want some deformation and but there should be limits to that deformation and sometimes we says that sometimes failure is desirable that's more interesting if it occurs at a reproducible level of load so that level should be in control although such circumstances are rare very rare sometimes deliberate uh, deliberately we want failure to occur when loads reach a predetermined level in expensive equipment 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 is singular and also plural so equipments is a wrong word equipment equipment in expensive equipment failure can be disastrous yeah this is important allowing failure depends on your cost of equipment so uh, engineers design into equipment in inexpensive extra parts so uh, your expensive extra part should be in uh, intact with inexpensive extra parts which fails at the consistent force uh, that is safely less than the main components can uh, that can tolerate so this is your main component which is expensive and this is uh, your uh, inexpensive component so uh, which fails at a consistent force uh, that is safely less than the main component to tolerate so uh, strength of this material this expensive material is little higher than this one so for transmission shaft this is a transmission shaft 
in a uh, drive train uh, such a system that protects the shaft is called torque fuse this is torque fuse you have uh, heard that fuse in electrical systems fuse electrical fuse electric fuse when electricity is uh, above some uh, bearable uh, voltage then that fuse fuses and here also there is a torque fuse just as an old fashioned electric fuse wow he has discussed wow that's wonderful this author is wonderful that he is just picking my mind okay just an, uh, as an old fashioned electric fuse breaks when the current is too high the pins in the torque fuse uh, when the torque is too high so this is very interesting so if loads exceeds uh, bearable capacity uh, strength of this torque um, uh, fuse then it will separate and fail uh, how mechanics of materials predict deformation and failure how we will be dealing with these things a few uh, very general scientific principles are needed few principles very few principles in engineering you have to study very few fundamental principles and later in your whole life that is up to 40 years uh, 40 years professional productive life uh, 30 is more productive life and maximum you can go to 40 years productive life professional careers so you have to just apply those few fundamental scientific principles on uh, on different case to case basis like uh, how medicine uh, specialist deals with those cases that uh, they study fundamental principles regarding behavior body's behavior human body behavior and uh, which medicines can be applied and later on they just uh, keep on applying those few fundamental principles in your whole life are needed to predict the deformation and failure so uh, with very general principles we can consider bodies with a wide range of geometries and materials so uh, you just need to know the principles and uh, there is wide range of geometry and wide range of geometry and materials available in your world and uh, you have to just apply those principles and uh, they will be subjected to different types of loadings materials of uh, mechanics of materials introduces these principles and applies them to bodies and loadings so what mechanics of material will do if he will adopt those principles and just apply them to different loadings and bodies which can be analyzed and uh, with relatively simple mathematics very simple mechanics of material is very simple and very fascinating and very important separate separate out the effects of materials and geometry by viewing a body as composed of very tiny elements this is important tiny elements your body is by itself it can be an element but you have to consider a sub divisible element infinite elements and there is a basic fundamental science regarding this uh, that finite element analysis that uh, all the bodies are cons uh, considered as different composed of different um, elements and uh, that mesh size you have to decide and you have to uh, follow some numerical computations to analyze those structures and on the basis of those uh, finite element analysis uh there are uh, softwares developed very complex softwares which can analyze your structures within few uh, minutes very complex analysis they can perform in few, very few minutes okay isolation separate isolate your body which you are going to study or isolate your element which you are going to study and consider that body is made of very infinite Uh, small infinitesimal elements to predict the behavior and failure mechanics of materials rely on critical insights that any body can be viewed as an assembly of tiny in uh, in fact infinitesimal cubic elements cubic elements whether it is necessary or not this is a question which i will be asking you later in uh, when you are doing some masters or those that uh, 
cubic elements can be ignored or some other type of elements can be brought into the picture okay this insight allows us to separate out the effect of the body's material from its shape so we are interested in materials not in shape so what this will provide the benefit added benefit that uh, this is value added surfaces just consider it the value added surfaces that uh, you have bought this thing and uh, this we want to separate this uh, shape from this material so we are interested in material so we will separate out material by considering an infinitesimal elements since a tiny cube is a standard shape the relation between the cube's deformation and the forces uh, on it depends on the material so standard shape it means that it is a hint that there can be different shapes there can be different elements rather than cubic elements if you are keen observer then you can understand that since tiny cube is a standard shape so there can be other shapes too but you cannot call them non standard shapes but this is simple shape so the relation between cube uh, cubes deformation and the uh, forces on it depends on only on on the materials so if this element is deforming that is totally deforming due to force and deform uh, that uh, force and material behavior or force and material relationship rather than shape because we have simplified the shape that this material is this cube okay for example the particular type of ceramic metal plastic or wood this these are materials these relationships can be measured and described for the given material and they are relevant to a body uh, of any shape and size and composed of that materials so they are uh, even your structures are composed of infinite uh, elements and uh, this is the mesh and uh, the size of the mesh and the size of the element and the shape of the element is very big science and you will be studying this in detail in uh, finite element analysis a separate is subject is dedicated to this mechanics of this uh, finite elements okay this one you can see that uh, this uh, we have isolated this thing and uh, we consider that this whole uh, i think this is uh, some element okay uh, anyone any gadget and we consider that this whole plastic is made of uh, infinite smaller elements and uh, different forces are applied on these elements and this is you can see that this is uh, your uh, roof truss and we consider that uh, this beam is composed of infinite elements okay second relate force and deformation at the element level with those at the level of the overall structure so this is important relationship of forces on element and relationship of forces on whole structure so you should be just um, copying those relationship on whole structure and bring that down to relationship of that force on that element okay how you are going to do with this you just assume that uh, there, there is you have placed some um, ruler on a table and you have uh, some fixed support over here and you just um, apply a force and it will deflect deflection i am using the word deflection not deformation deformation is on geometry deflection is also on geometry so what's the difference between deflection and deformation deformation is related to the shape this is important remember it deformation is related to shape and deflection is related to the distance this is important very important you will study it rarely so the 
information is related to geometry geometry while deflection is related to position there is difference between position and geometry geometry is related to i reiterate geometry deflection is related to geometry because deflection no deformation deformation is related to geometry in deformation there is change in shape while deflection is related to position there is change in position of the element okay mechanics of materials uh, defines stress and strain to describe force and deformation okay this is important so mechanics of material but it do uh, it plays some brings some different roles there is a stress and there is another guy strain and how they are going to do they are related to uh, force and deformation force and deformation are parents and stress and uh, strains are childs from force you can calculate stress and from deformation you can calculate strain so parent child behavior just nothing else and uh, deformation at the level of the ele elemental cube you just a mechanism of material what it do that uh, it brings that whole body um, forces to element level and uh, then it studies those it means that uh, there is a force and uh, there is a deformation and uh, it what it does that uh, it converts that to stress and strain at element level cube level to determine the body's overall deformation and potential for failure we combine material specific stress strain relationship of the cubic element so uh, if you are going to predict the overall uh, deflection or deformation behavior def uh, we will listening deflection behavior here um, uh, deflection behavior then uh, you have to uh, specify material uh, related stress strain relationship for the cube stress strain relationship uh, that's hooke's law for uh, stress is directly proportional to strain stress is is equal to modulus of elasticity times strain and second is equilibrium relationship between force on the body as a whole and the forces on the element this is important this is your engineering mechanics this is your mechanics of solids and third one geometric relationship between deformation of the whole body and its element geometric relationship this is your structure analysis geometric relationship between deflection deformation and of your body whole body and its elements so what's this based on uh, statics what you have done you have calculated uh, there is force applied on this element this body and uh, there is deflection change in position in vertical axis is called deflection and uh, there is a fixed support this is uh, the, the real structure and this is the model structure and uh, you can calculate the support and conditions there will be three reactions vertical which will be equivalent to this force horizontal will be zero because there is no horizontal force and uh, there will be moment and force multiplied by by this uh, moment arm it will be a uh, moment and secondly you can see that this will this is your uh, equilibrium relationship between force uh, forces on the body as a whole and force on the element this is whole uh, equilibrium so i told you that if your whole body is in equilibrium then your elements are also in equilibrium so you can see that uh, after deflection these elements will also deflect and uh, what will happen initially they will resist this elements will resist and there will be stresses and if that resistance has crossed then there will be strain because deflection cannot occur without 
provision of strains. If there is no strain, then there is no deflection. This is important. Deflection is a type of strain. Very important. Okay. Equilibrium. From equilibrium, we studied that uh, body will remain in equilibrium, but uh, there are also forces, and you have studied that when a body is subjected and uh, apply uh, forces are applied, and there is different deformations, and if that deformation is not visible, then that means that there are immense level of stresses bear by those elements of that member. So these are stresses and uh, if that stresses or bearable stresses are exceeded due to this external force then uh, strain will occur and then strain due to that strain there is deflection. So from force you calculated the equilibrium, you struggle with the stress and uh, with the help of um, materials and stress you will calculate the strain and with the help of strain we are going to calculate the deflection and this whole circle uh, and you know the deflection then you can calculate these things and this is the circular structure uh, circular cycles cycle is circular this is important where it comes the analysis part and where it comes the design part in this, in this whole circle where you see the analysis part and where you see the design part you have to ponder upon it and uh, ask yourself where is where you are going to design and where you are going to analyze. That is important. Okay, the third part. Recognize that loaded bodies often deform in simple patterns, uh, namely stretching, twisting, and bending. So deformation is mostly uh, in, uh, in simple structures there is simple deformation in complex structures there are combined loadings and uh, deformation is quite complex but no matter how complex they are quantifiable and very simple engineers deal with deformations and uh, failure in, in structures having a wide variety of shapes materials and loadings so uh, there can be a wide variety of shapes materials and loadings However, in mechanics of materials, we study deformation and failure primarily for simple patterns of deformation that is stretching, twisting and bending. You can see this, uh, this uh, guy is, I don't know what he is doing over here. I think he want to take some, this is an exciting moment that uh, you can just diving something out. Okay, you will just isolate this thing and uh, you are going to study this cable and uh, there will be stretching this is your original member and there is stretching and you can see that there is a squeezing in shape squeezing is also directly related to shape so you can see that squeeze in shape in shape is just redundant you cannot talk on just uh, place redundant words in your sentences okay you should be precautional that uh, large in shape large means shape that that is large if that is large that means that the large is the shape so it's large in shape in shape is something redundant okay you should be careful about these things twisting you can see that uh, this is your uh, vehicle uh, wheel and there is twisting and uh, original and this is twisting and there is bending and you can see for each pattern overall loading is described by equal and opposite forces so equal and opposite so that's equilibrium equal and opposite the overall deformation is described by single single parameter how much the body stretches twists and bend so this is the deformation how much is stress stretch stretching is deformation twisting is deformation and bending is deformation there are other uh, shearing is deformation 
and twisting is a type of shearing too this is important I have told you previously that uh, torsional stresses are shear stresses and bending stresses are combination of stretching and compression bending stresses are combination of axial stresses this is important The fourth part study deflection and failure for each pattern individually and then how they combine so this is important that uh, deflection and failure you should study them individually and then combine them together in mechanics of material we learn how forces and deformation vary from one cubic element to another for each deformation pattern so how these cubes will be um, deforming from one element to another with that information we interrelate the overall load and deformation for that pattern and we find the load at which failure will occur as by uh, as a byproduct as a byproduct we gain insight into how the body's uh, geometry length and cross section and the body's material independently affect the overall deformation and failure okay uh, faced with the application that appears complex we must also learn to detect the presence of these simple deformation patterns alone or often in combination we typically analyze the deformations and stresses in each pattern and then combine them uh, appropriately to find the total deformation and determine its failure determine if the failure will occur so different elements will be studied and uh, different patterns will be generated and the overall uh, to study your overall behavior of your member you have to know the behavior of element and all the elements and then you can predict the failure mechanism so this is uh, enough for today and uh, we will be coming with uh, more interesting uh, units in upcoming lectures Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.